and then I just start asking away. I mean, usually, right. but this is always a kind of a good visual shot. Okay. So the whole video store scene, like, um, from what I can tell, and correct me, you know, if I'm mistaken, but it's kind of, y'all have been around for 35 years, right? A little longer than that. Been oh. in the business for, you know, over 36 years. I've oh, been wow. in the video business for almost 40 years. Okay. So like, um, this was, so you could say it was almost like, you know, from the get go of like the whole home recording format, like, um, you know, back when it was so new that, you know, you know, people didn't know, is this legal or something? Uh, no, you're kind of mixing media and stuff. Oh, okay. it? Yeah. Because, you know, it, the, uh, it, it, I'm just referring to that because it's like, you know, the, I don't think that, uh, well, it was, it was in the eighties. You could rent, correct me, uh, you could actually rent a videotape uh, player machine, very similar to a little similar to what you're do, doing. It's a, a bigger one. You could stick a VHS tape in there and record. But yeah, you could theoretically record, uh, not theoretically, but you could record uh, from your VCR the time in the 80s and record like a show or TV show, but you couldn't... Um, you couldn't rent that out. Oh, okay. Yeah, that that was a that that was a felony. Oh, okay. Yeah, you couldn't do that. So they, they, we got back in the early days as far as the video market is, is that uh, the first uh, store ha only had 198 movies. So back in oh, the wow. uh, the early 80s, uh, there weren't that. There's only a few hundred films uh, being released because the studios really. I don't know if you knew this or not. The studios, were, the studios are very hesitant about releasing it to the mainstream. They didn't want that. They wanted full. They've always had full control of it. But there was this guy that I think I forgot. He used to do those. Um, there's a uh, interesting story you can look it up on Wikipedia. Is that he kept on bugging him out. It's like, oh, there's this new thing, VHS. You know, give me some films. And he released. A, I think it was like ten or twenty movies. And then the studios at that point realized, oh wait a minute, this is a, a really good uh, avenue to uh, another s source of uh, income and that just led the whole sort of domino effect on you know video stores okay so tell us a little bit about yourself like um obviously it would one could infer that you know you love movies and stuff and uh like um how did you like what led from that up until you know owning a store uh so, so that question is like yeah always love movies uh, my brother and I, he'd, uh, he's two years older than I was, is that he would uh, would wake me up in the middle, you know, uh, like at midnight or something, or we'd have to stay up to watch some cool Godzilla movies or something. Because back in the days, and your mom uh, could probably contest to this, you would, would have to just look at the, uh, uh, the, the TV guide or look. It's like, oh, there's a movie, that, you know, whatever. It's like this Godzilla movie's playing in the middle of the night or, or you know, Ben-Hur is going to be playing. But it, you would have to kind of you'd mark your calendar until it would show on TV because growing up in El Paso, there's only a couple of channels. Okay. So kick it up, you know, uh, a good probably uh, almost two decades when you could when they you could uh, rent out a, a machine that and you could pick from a, you know at that time there's only a couple hundred movies to pick from and take you to your home and watch it as your leisure oh my god that was like heaven because you know going to like this avant-garde or you know cool theaters growing up watching james bond movies or planet of the apes in the 60s and stuff it's like yeah it was always or drive-in movies at the time so yeah always had a love for film and and then doing the super eight movies that was always really exciting you know i did a ton of those and that was a lot of fun. But those days were just, you know, like I tell my kids, like, with you know, you can film and do a movie on your phone. But back then, filming on Super 8, you'd have to buy the movie. You'd have to, you know, when you're, you know, 10 years old or something, you'd have to go and tell your mom, hey, listen, I have some money. Can you take me to the store to get movies and like these three minute reels? And so you would have enough money for like, whatever, less than 10 minutes. And so you'd have to make sure you had your script was right. And then once you film it, you have no idea what it's filming, uh, what you had filmed. You get your general idea, and then you have to go leave it off at whatever, you know, whatever. I think it was Gibson's. I can't remember. Maybe it was Kmart. I can't remember what it was around at that time. 
and it would get developed and it would have to wait a month or whatever how long it took or something and then you would see it and it's like oh you, then you start editing and stuff so those days were just completely different so that answer your kind of question that kind of led up to the to the love of films so when my brother was actually working at this uh video store that popped up in phoenix is that uh he asked me hey listen we need a a, a store manager and started working for a video store i think that was like in 80 and uh 80 81 and uh it's like man this is a great business to go to and i came to austin to visit a friend and we already open up stores for them it was called sounds easy and then i thought it's like oh man this is such a cool business you just sit around talking about movies and rent out movies you get them back it's a great business model and uh so i decided austin uh, would be a cool town to open up a store and Back in those days, is like you were so many video stores. You look in a phone book and lap, map, uh, map them out on a map, and it's like, okay, there's no video store here, here, and here, and you would, you know, open up there, and then the business it was like a gold rush. It's like you'd open up a store, and you made so much money opening up the store. It's like let's find a second location, and you open up a third and fourth, and it uh, had a total of nine different locations in Austin, and then Blockbuster came into the scene and then started crushing. Uh, the local kind of scene. I think at, at the heyday, there's probably 400 video stores in Austin. Dang. And then, uh, but we did something different because the mom and pop was always trying to compete against Blockbuster because they would get Blockbuster dominated the industry by having 50 or 100 copies. And we decided to, you know, it's like I'm only going to get five copies and spend the money on, you know, weird, cool, eclectic stuff. Mm -hmm. So that sort of crushed the vast majority of, you know, all the small independents. And then, of course, dominoes. I mean, it caused a domino effect where you just had Blockbuster and Hollywoods. And then uh, I think Hollywood, I think, closed before Blockbuster. I can't remember. Yeah, I think it was because I, my peak enjoyment of them was like 2008. I think they closed in like 2010 or something. The Hollywood or Blockbuster? Uh, Hollywood. Oh, okay. I definitely know that... Um, they, um, I definitely remember Blockbuster closing in like 2011 or so. Yeah. But, uh, it seemed like it's been later, longer than that, but yeah, oh, time yeah. flies. It's been so, a while. But yeah, so, it, yeah, so there you go. That's, that's, uh, okay. a, a, uh, super fast edition of the last, uh, 40 years. Oh, dang. So, like, um, so you said that you ran a store with your brother in Arizona, right? Yeah, it was, it was called Sounds Easy. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So we just kind of managed these two stores, and we actually opened up a store for them in Flagstaff, Arizona. And it's like, God, this is a you know fairly easy business to get into, and it was. It's not your typical business because you just rent out a product, you socialize, and you just get it back. It was really cool. But you know, the people don't forget it was that VHS was real expensive. It was like fifty to uh, sixty-five dollars for wholesale to Dang. get a VHS. So when the DVD industry came out in the, uh, um, I think it was like 94 when it started kind of coming out, we were the first ones in town to, uh, to carry DVDs. Because the industry, the, the thought was back then, that was the end of the era, is that video stores aren't going to, people were going to just, they theorized that everyone was going to buy movies and no longer rent them. Because it was accessible at, you know, under, you know, whatever, $20, $30 to buy DVDs. Mm -hmm. But it was just the opposite. And I always thought this is like, you know, people are just going to just, people aren't going to just rent, buy everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we just end up, uh, you know, running with that. So for us, it was like a new way because it was uh, Blockbuster and stuff, you know, sales were kind of drooping a little bit with the DVD era. It definitely popped back up okay. for another decade. Okay. Could you give us a bit more detail about, um, you know, the story of opening up this store, like, you know, like um what those early days were like and um uh, i well, know like uh, early the, memories I you love, might have of it the uh the store was actually down the street uh and we opened that one up in um, 85 and this one we moved like you know i'm trying to think of what, it was in like a 99 moved over here and uh I built this top section uh to carry this sort of amphitheater kind of you know that was a whole sort of vibe of it you know kind of like the old uh, uh, theater where you have this upper deck area but uh, 
You know, just that we started, you know, years before we started this thing called Free Beer Tuesday. Oh, okay. And, uh, it but was, that was, was popular. <laughs> yeah, it was great because it was a way of socializing because it t- would sometimes it's like a, Don and me, it's like, oh, let's kind of do something kind of, it would get beer sponsorship and make it kind of cool because it's like, you know, have drinks and then uh, roam around, you know, and just socialize. It became a really cool event. But uh, So somebody could say that like maybe the heyday of like video rentals was like, the 90s like that was the peak like um what would be like what would a normal day and i guess the highlight the weekend of like a video store be like for back in those days for people who might not know well you know to give it idea back in the the early days is that people would be at your store waiting for you to open up at 10 o'clock mm-hmm and there'd be a line and it's like in the you could, the heyday of the video industry like the weekends they would be uh you'd have like uh four registers and it'd be you know probably a you know dozen people in line for each register it was it was pretty nuts Dang. this was th- now this was before blockbuster oh wow you know, yeah i mean we're still busy because we're kind of a niche um uh, uh business and we typically uh, uh we had five locations open at once and they were always away from the blockbusters because okay. we tend to you know always uh open up a store that wasn't your typical sort of like i think your blockbuster sort of mm-hmm. location it was more sort of like a lower middle class you know neighborhoods oh okay so like um i think you've mentioned before like all kinds of people have like um treaded the halls of this store like um like what would be some names that people would know uh reference like celebrities or yeah or or just any creative types maybe on a local scene or as you mentioned celebrities like any notable figures uh let's see well yeah it's like we're i say have all the science stuff that people would come over from you know um trying to you know think as far as some of the folks that uh well like local director uh link letter tarantino uh we used to uh, uh what other locals you know or you know outside I'm trying to uh, blank it as far as age as far as the woman that was in blade runner uh um uh, she was she came oh here the main to... love interest of it or yeah. the oh. one who did the backflips oh my God, she's probably be ashamed if she sees this like uh, Don't worry, I'm not that famous. <laughs> uh, so we've had a number of them. I can't, you know, think of them all off, you know, at a hand. But, oh, okay. you know, it's always kind of fun as far as they would, you know, get the staff would, you know, get them to sign the, you know, poster or some kind of box and okay. stuff. So, I mean, it, it's literally just all over the place because when you have a business open this long, you have musicians and stuff that are people who, you know, grew up with the inventory and they would, you know, uh, be successful and, and okay. they come back every once in a while. What about one of your favorite directors? Oh yeah, um, I've I've heard that like you know, um, you know, I was reading in a book about uh, you know Richard Linklater. He said that Austin, when he made Slacker, was a totally different city than it is now, or even when it was the whole music art capital thing of the world. Um, is it true? Would you say that's true that Austin changed that dramatically? Oh yeah, all you have to do is look at Slacker and see how uh, just decrepit you know Austin was in the sense that when they're roaming around, how many empty buildings and uh, graffiti and stuff. It's actually gonna. I feel like it's gonna kind of turn that way for a while. Dang. It's just because in you know, just because it's like with everything closed down, that's what it kind of feels like. It's going back like 30, 40 years. It's kind of Dang. crazy. Like I tell my kids, like traveling around the country, like going to New York City or just how, how much trash and stuff was around. And then it started getting cleaned up in the 80s and 90s and stuff. But Austin was, uh, yeah, it was a mess. Dang. I don't know when the last time you saw, you know, Slacker, but you should take a look at it. And it's kind of, oh, man. Yeah. I felt there was, you know, like um, famously, there's kind of always been like, I guess like a friendly rivalry between San Antonio and Austin and um, when I looked at Austin I'm like oh wow this feels more like San Antonio now than it does like Austin today. Oh that's interesting. Yeah and uh, 
but uh yeah it didn't feel like you know it seemed like a different city and it's it, going to go through a lot of growing pains after okay. covid and stuff mm-hmm. i think it's going to be a, it's going to be a little while before he recovers because like the music uh, scene, they predict like eighty percent of the music venues will be closed. And mm-hmm. it, you know, what's happened to Austin is like this is a close, a perfect example. Is like if the real estate uh, was reasonable, I would stick around. But because it's so expensive, it's cost prohibitive. Uh-huh. Like for an example, the AC. The reason we're sweating profusely is the AC. Typically in the old days, okay, we get an AC fixed for five thousand dollars, but there's so many permits required to. That five thousand dollar, you know, uh, AC would be fifty thousand dollars now, Jeez, and this place has three of them, and they're all bad. Dang. So not only is that, uh, and then the property taxes are so prohibitive too. Was that you'd be spending, you know, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars a month in property taxes? I mean, it's just ridiculous. Dang. And it, it, and it, it, it gets to a point where only big corporate can mm-hmm. handle those type of expenses. In the days I started, I love video for seven thousand dollars. Dang. You couldn't do that, you know. And obviously, it was a small inventory, oh, yeah, but yeah. that's the reason. It's like typically what's so what's happening now. The reason that obviously you saw the post is that to duplicate this inventory would be over a million dollars. Just at the, it's like oh, well, I can get that movie for a dollar, or you know, this at Walmart or something. But then you start jumping to, you know, the next twenty thousand or something. That's like okay, well, that's going to cost five to ten dollars, and then you get to another group that's like okay, well, I can't find that one. That's going to cost, you know, twenty bucks or fifty bucks. So he starts adding up because of the vast amount of the collection. So right. instead of me just kind of giving it to somebody or selling it off to a bunch of individuals so, so they can have their private library, I, I think that's really selfish. I think it's better for somebody yeah. to take it over and still make it accessible to film lovers. To, so you still have that experience of a video store are so this has had like a pretty long and storied history i'm guessing um were there any like um you know excluding like were there any customers who you know you ever you know struck up a rapport with or like you know any that stood out to you whether they be creatives or just you know interesting folks who you have like any anecdotes about well yeah they, they that's like my whole life I mean, it's a mean, meaning there's so many, you know, friends and characters, it's, it's, it's difficult to, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's literally endless. You used the word community earlier when you were describing um, your, I guess, the music venue that you were talking about? Yeah, Spider House. Spider House. And uh, would you say that this also created a... a oh, community? absolutely. I think that one thing I didn't realize that... Uh, I was doing some story years ago. As I called it a uh, was a, cura- a cultural cur- curator. Is is that I didn't realize that wh- when you create a business that's uh, accessible to the people, from music to art to film, and you make it uh, uh, ex- uh, enjoyable and aesthetically sort of pleasing, as fun and funky. It's super cute in here. Oh, thanks. Yeah. And it, you know, it it, be- it becomes, and I think that's what makes Spider House special too. Is that we're always different. Like Blockbuster was very, you know, blue and yellow and very, you know, kind mm-hmm. of sterile and stuff. And it's like, this is kind of like, I will not say grungy, but it's, it's the imperfection makes it its perfection. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because it, it's people that it, uh, typically the creative person and the artistic and eclectic, they're more drawn to a place that's a lot more sort it's of... It's got a lot of kitsch. Too. Right, exactly. Yeah. Rather than a place mm-hmm. that is too polished and stuff mm-hmm. and I think that typically as my always sense is that when people aren't fulfilled you know and obviously this isn't you know can be right across the board is that if somebody wants something just perfect and black and white and you know nothing on their walls or this is like their home environment is that I think there's something inside of them that's like screaming out to be creative mm-hmm. and then people you know tend to it's almost like an insect or something like I always call it like spider house is that People are drawn like insects or bugs or animals. They're, they're attracted to a certain type of energy, aesthetically, visually, and just experience. And it's so, yeah. So I feel like after all these years, it's like, and it just comes from naturally, but I think that, you know, when you see stickers or posters and. It's very you know, eclectic and yeah, it reminds and you, it kind of is like a ta- time capsule right. of the era that started the whole, like, you know, movies and fun and just, it's, right. it's really fun. It's. 
Yeah. And we pulled, you know, it's a, you, you're missing a lot because I pulled about over a thousand toys, but uh, a lot more. I like all the posters. Cool. I really like the the cult thing over here. And yeah, that you, was this guy was back in the early '80s. This guy named Greg Geisler made all that stuff. He nice. pulled a bunch of other stuff off. Like he did. I like this the thing TV. Over here. Check it out. He did that, and yet in, in the old days, is that uh, Geisler like that? He would cut it up. This was pre. You know, when you would go out and like, uh, you just put it in the, the computer and it prints it out. Mm -hmm. That's actually a piece of vinyl that oh, wow. he would cut out and stick it on there. Mm -hmm. There's another one over here. Do you want to give us a tour? Yeah, well, just, yeah, yeah, sure. It's like, well, there's, yeah, too bad with, you know, all the toys are gone. Like he did this one over here too. I mean, he's so eclectic. Like I can show you, share you some other stuff that, uh, but yeah, I mean, so he would get a piece of vinyl and just, get an exacto knife and cut it out. Dang. I mean, very impressive and stuff. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, every little, like I was telling S Sebastian that uh, these came from Varsity Theater. We had a bunch of, uh, it was a theater um, in, in campus, but we had a, oh, a ton of, uh, like this was all filled with toys because people would, they would see our toy collection. They would just drop off just boxes and boxes of toys. Oh, cool. And what's really kind of interesting just uh, pre COVID is that uh, the last couple of years is that we would get thousands of VHS and DVDs donated. People were just starting to throw them away. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cause that, you know, one of the things is that uh, the studios are excited about getting control of all the, the you know, this inventory. Because it, the video stores are the last haven for the independent business to actually, you, I, when I bought these, I have the rights to them oh. and I can show them publicly. I can oh. rent them out and they want, they want to have full control of that. That's why it's really important to continue this inventory and, and continue to grow it oh. because they want to be able to show uh, movies when they want to show them and you know, when to pull them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so true. that's the reason that Disney's buying all the theaters because you know you can keep those on record. Is is that uh, Disney's reminded me of uh, GM during the the fifties? Mm -hmm. Is that GM bought all the the, tr uh, the electric train systems all over the country, other other through another company, and they closed them down mm -hmm. because oh they weren't making any money, and they what they did was that's because they wanted to sell more cars. And Disney's mm -hmm. currently doing that with the theaters; they're buying out all the theaters and stuff. And I almost mm -hmm. guarantee you what they're going to do. Oh, they're, you know, they're, they're not making any money. Mm -hmm. And because they want full control because they want to stream everything. Yeah. And I mean, Netflix and those, the, it's fun, but it gets real boring. Really it does. Fast. And you don't have that interaction. It's like, if you come in, it's like, hey, listen, I'm into this certain movie or director or some, oh, you should watch this and this. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're a perfect example. It's nine out of 10 times where it's like, we're talking about movies and we can't stream it. We stream everything. Mm -hmm. And you know, we're always here all the time because it's like, oh, let's get, you know, this movie because, you know, it wasn't available. Or if right. it is available, they want now, I know it's a, you know, I don't know how often you guys stream, but you saw an uptick before you get something for a dollar, two dollars, if you can mm -hmm. find it on Amazon, but then they want as much as like $10 to stream something. Yeah, yeah. But if you don't, if you don't have any other options going to <clears throat> local video store, it's yeah. like, all right, I'll just suck it up. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So. Like and we're, um, oh, what were you? I was just going to say, yeah, the pandemic has kind of shown us all what that's about. And you're just yeah, because home that, by yourself and you got to, you want to watch something. So you're sucking it up. Yeah. yeah I like guess I'm, I'll I'm, sign I'm, up for HBO. Like I was looking for <laughs> in Leon. It was a, uh, the professional cause I wanted to show that to, uh, you know, the family, but, uh, yeah, but, you know, so let's see, I'm, I'm, you know, hopeful that, uh, it's gonna, something's gonna pan out that uh, someone's going to buy it. Let's see. So you want to sell the whole, the place in its entirety, just like it is. Well, the buildings, you know, as far as my understanding is she already sold it. Oh, okay. So all the so inventory needs to, the yeah, the idea okay. first, uh, the thought and idea was getting rid of the, sell the building with the inventory oh, okay. or give it away to, you know, but now it's just like, you know, now she oh. is a time clock. So yeah. would you mind um, like, you know, maybe walking us through the store and showing us some of like your favorite movies? They're all my favorite movies. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I'll, sh I'll sh definitely share this video and stuff that uh, uh, this dear friend of mine is doing a documentary and stuff. But uh, okay, and you can, you know, you can actually go on the website and actually go through the whole store through Google Earth, which oh, wow. is kind of cool. Like, um, I'm at, 
I've been to some places where they, um, they've, you know, an establishment has, um, you know, they've decided to, you know, Hi. pack it in, but then, uh, and then they, like, just erase their social media presence. Like, um, I definitely would hope that, you know, that this place sticks around, e if only in, like, the digital, you know, age. Well, you know, the goal would be to somebody who would continue the name mm -hmm. and yeah. continue the, the social media. Because oh, yeah, I yeah. really enjoy that. Yeah. I love doing, I don't even follow me on Instagram or Facebook. I, I love always constantly doing posting and stuff mm -hmm. or, you know, trivia. And the whole point of that, like, is to continue. It's like, oh, I didn't think about that movie. Oh, I like to see that one again or show that movie. That's a whole inspiration. That I enjoy really doing that. Yeah. Um, definitely one of my favorite things. Um, about uh i really enjoyed video stores around 2008 the most that's when i would just make it a regular thing of going there and i love discovering movies that maybe other people wouldn't have heard of yeah like um i got really into like the foreign films and uh but uh yeah i was really glad that i decided to like that was a chapter of my life where you know Horror i just movie. explored and uh yeah, well, yeah. I mean, just that's what's great about video stores. There's so many movies you would never even begin to imagine that you could find, you know, streaming. So. All right, um, would you be able to like, you know, take us outside and talk a little bit about the art on the building? Oh, sure. Yeah. You know, see, if, see if you can find Leon, the professional. Did yeah, you it's L E O N, the professional. Did you walk I think it's the. Store a, oh, not yet. I, mean, not yet. I was just trying to. Okay. I, don't, I don't know if. But, uh, I, I can't remember which block. I mean, what uh, Spartacus wanted. So, the, the gentleman that did uh, was. Uh, the guy's name is Justin Prince. And uh, they, the one that doesn't get enough attention is the, uh, this one here. It's with, uh, this is a, a Teresa. She was a, uh, she worked for us for a number of years and she was a, uh, she was in the front cover of Slacker. Oh, okay. And she was a, uh, a, a drummer for the Butthole Surfers. Oh. So it's like a multiple thing. Not only does she work for us, but you know she's very iconic as far as it's an iconic image from Slacker, Linklater's first movie, and the uh, and she was a, you know a drummer Surfico for the Butthole Surfers. Oh, uh, Surfico. And so yeah, when we're yeah, we're doing the mural, we're just kind of coming up with different uh, images. Oh wow, that's awesome. Uh, that embodied as far as the. Uh, They've gotten worn after, you know, 20 plus years. Yeah. Because you recognize Westworld and Serpico and Chaplin and Divine and, and then, uh, but yeah, he's, you know, when you're watching, Prince is so talented when you, uh, when you watch somebody spray paint with a can. Oh yeah. And it, it's just like, how do they do that? And it's impressive how long it's lasted because obviously the sun just beats it. But I think, you know, part of it, you know, the, uh, not only inside, but the outside is, you know, okay. is, you know, adds to the flair of the, uh, the culture, which is, you know, I think is important. To yeah, one of the things I've always theorized about places, like, you know, whether they be video stores or bookstores or libraries or churches is, like, where something you could do at home, where you could do the things that those places are dedicated to at home. It's like a place that is dedicated to the idea of something, you know, it really enhances that. Yeah. Like um, the only recurring dream I've ever had is um, I wake up at the video store that we used to go to all the time <laughs> and I'm like, oh wow, it's back. But then I wake up like, oh shoot, yeah, that's right. It closed a while ago. <laughs> well, hopefully somebody will, you know, I've talked to, you know, a, a a number of different candidates that I think that they get it, understand it, and can make something kind of cool. Especially the enhanced, if you have the financing to do like a drive-in theater or a little movie theater would be really cool. So not only it's a, it's a old school drive-in theater experience, but you know, you can, uh, you know, pick your movie and, you know, watch it 
the theater, so let's see. Okay. Um, let's see. Will we be able to go in there and maybe browse through the genres, and if I have a question, you could, like, you know, give me an answer about it, or just, you know, spout off whatever? Oh, uh, yeah, like, what, what, uh... Well, I don't know, if there are some titles that, like, if I see, I'm just going to be like, oh, wow, I remember that movie. And then, like, um, you can commentate on it or, you know, just whatever. Like, um, whatever happens, you know, will happen. Okay, yeah, sure. Awesome. Metropolis. Metropolis? Yeah, it, it's a uh, it's an animation. Oh yeah. Like middle uh, kids into Metropolis. Oh, this is a funny uh, something weird oh, video. So this was an interesting story. So neat. Yeah, Marty, you're familiar with his stuff. <laughs> he would grab uh, public domain films mm -hmm. back from the 50s and 60s. They're really weird, fun, and collecting. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, you got to remember, like some of these like documentaries and stuff were next to impossible to get years ago, oh, yeah. and still they still are. Is that uh, because of uh, the rights and whatnot? Oh yeah. Uh, you, one of the things that you know to people don't realize is that when you look at Netflix or Hulu, it's like oh, okay, there's they only pick. There might I think at any given time there's only a couple thousand movies available, maybe four thousand, but you really get a sense when. You look at the new releases that come out. It's like, oh wow, there's a lot more that's available, you know, around the world. Like, you know, Bollywood's a oh, massive section. That. You look at, you know, the Asian market. It just, you know, it's huge. You don't see the vast, you know. Uh, I mean, it, it, like this selection was available on Netflix or yeah, Hulu or something. Cool. You spent all day, you know, looking. Uh, you'd be enamored. Uh, okay, let's see. This this tip like this wall over here is that the stuff that uh, people would just kind of donate, which is uh, which is super cool. It's so we just kind of pick through it and stuff. It's like okay, we don't have this or this was stolen because after you know forty years, a lot gets oh, yeah. damaged, stolen, uh, whatnot. Oh man, craziest thing. Um, this movie, The Fly. Like I still cannot watch this. Like the nineteen fifty eight one. Yeah, this is uh, this is like the original one. Oh yeah, like I yeah. still today can't watch I, that. You know, we're currently closed right now. See? Sorry, <laughs> yeah. I, just, I, I, I was too scared to come in. Oh really? I, was like, <laughs> I don't want to get creeped it's out. Like, so I was like, you guys go in, and then if it's like, you're in well, there if you want to show your friends, off. you're more than welcome to take yeah. it out. If you you never been here before, you're more no, than we welcome. Haven't. Oh like, okay. Yeah, you can come on in. It, you know, the eighth. Just an FYI, the AC is out, so it's really warm. So you're more than welcome to. I just wanted to check it out, but I was oh, okay. like, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> we'll just walk around and look at it for a minute. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah, no problem. You should make a museum uh, here. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so um, what are some, what do you think are some genres that have, like, you know, maybe a video store would be more adept at facilitating than say streaming. Oh my, it, it, it's really endless. One of the things that I think it's really important as far as uh, keeping this uh, eclectic, you know, A through Z is that uh, Blockbuster was a lot, uh, was horrible at it. And uh, Hollywood as far as big conglomerates was a lot better about that because they had like a gay and lesbian section. Mm -hmm. But Blockbuster, got so big and arrogant is like okay we're only going to order this movie if you delete this and this scene they're really big as far as censorship mm -hmm. and I've always been in the uh, proponent as far as like you know we we have everything if you want to just uh, yeah. pick and choose who you want to watch you don't want to have you don't have to watch this documentary that may be disturbing or this horror movie you think is offensive mm -hmm. or something 
uh, so when you're dealing with you know streaming and stuff, they'll edit stuff out where there's just thousands, tens of thousands of films you can't get uh, on streaming because they're because when you're dealing with these big conglomerates, these big corporations, they have their hands tied of what they can or cannot you know show because mm -hmm. oh I find that offensive yeah. or you know you, you can't do oh, that. So it, it changes so all the time. But with a brick and mortar independence. No, it's like we want to just show everything and you decide what or not to take. Yeah, like it's a small thing, but to drive home your point, I was watching an episode of Friends that I had seen on DVD so much before, but then when I saw it on Netflix, when it was on there, there's a scene where Chandler, after talking with his boss, gets on his chair and he's spinning around it like a little kid. And on the next Netflix version, it was gone. I'm like, hold on, I know this. And it was like, it makes you wonder if they can nix like really small moments like that, you know, how, what could they do to like significant Oh yeah, moments? I mean, it's, yeah, so kind of going back to as far as when it, let's say you kick up the clock like 10 years, you know, my sense is that you're probably going to stop producing DVDs here in the next coming years. Oh dang. Because everyone's streaming, oh, I want to have a DVD player like they did VHS. And then so what happens to the inventory, you know, then? Dang. Mm -hmm. It's going to be completely different. I mean, it's just like, so... It's to be different as far as the accessibility when it gets less and less and less where, you know, all the video stores are gone or you only have one or two left in the country. Yeah. So it's to be pretty impressive. Did you find, did you find it, Sebastian? Excuse me. You did? Did yeah, how about Metropol, uh, Metro, uh, Paul, uh, Metropol, uh, oh my God, I did a brain fart. Yeah, did, he, did you find that one? Is it back over here? Oh. Let's see. Um, so, like the weekend, you would say would be like the sort of busiest time for like a video store, right? Well, no, what it would actually it kind of changed. Actually, you know, so the busiest cute. time that, uh, ended up being uh, Free Beer Tuesday. Oh yeah, Mystery yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that's cute. Yeah, well, I have a ton of toy collection. It's are y'all selling the toys or? Uh, no, we're just, you know, vast majority of them we end up keeping. Oh, I depending see. Depending because we've had some of them signed. Oh, I see. That's very cool. Here's a, here, here's a souvenir. We did these at the, you know. We, so we did was that uh, when we had, you, I have no idea what's on here, but they were, you ended up doing these kind of retro kind of cool. Oh, yeah. But this oh. one's kind of cool. You guys can have this one. This one has a fun because it, it has the airport with a sticker on it. Let's see, where is it? Like, have there, I guess, um, you know, in our day, like we've gone, seen movies that, you know, were really hard to find. Have there been m people who, you know, there's been a movie they've been looking for that like, they remember from there, way back. Sure. It, it, I don't know what's on there, but we just put our stickers on there just for fun. <laughs> it's kind of fun figuring it out. <laughs> I, had, I had a big box of VHSs that like, my parents got rid of because they didn't know what life, and I was really sad about it. There was, a, there was actually a, uh, a whole film festival about that found VHS tapes. Yeah. I thought that was really kind of cool. Yeah, I hope they donated them. I never knew that. But, <laughs> but that's what those are, you know, old donated tapes. Like, yeah. okay, we can't use this. We stuck stickers on it for fun. Wonderful. Thank you. Oh, yeah, thanks for coming in, guys. But uh, yeah, have there been, have you had any moments where like somebody came here looking for something they hadn't seen in forever and you know, they're like, wow, I haven't, you know, I haven't seen this in years and I found it here. Oh yeah, that's daily. Oh yeah? Yeah. Dang. I, mean, we had, I can't tell you how often we have people coming from San Antonio. We're just all, you know, from right. hour away and stuff all the time. Like, were there any particular moments where you just felt like, wow, like that stuck out to you that you can remember? Or like, is it all just, you know, they're all just that significant and mean so much? Yeah, it just like, there's so many of them that when you kind of do something for so long, it, it just, I want to see you get desensitized towards it, but it just, yeah. And it was pretty much daily that people would just oh, okay. get, you know, I heard about this place, I'm visiting from LA or visiting from, who knows, like somewhere in Europe or something, just wanted to come check it out, which is pretty okay. cool. Cool. All right, um, let's see. Hey, Mom. Yeah? You got any questions to ask? Um, oh, sorry. Metropolis? <laughs> no, no, it was Metropolis. Oh. 
<laughs> See, like, we couldn't find, neither one of those we could find. Questions? No, I'm Okie doke. Yeah. So, do you guys want to tape? Oh, this, sure. This one's a cool one, just because I was saying it has that tape. Uh -huh. Just for, just oh, whatever. Yeah, definitely. Just like a, a Chosky. <laughs> yeah, we'll definitely put it in and, like, figure out, you know, what we're going to, like, what's on it. <laughs> No, no, that make it make it, you know, make it a mystery. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Somebody's gonna take this off. Is that cool? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's um. All right, I'm just gonna go around and get footage and stuff. Oh, after okay. All. 